In the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, the Como Harriet Streetcar Line was part of the Twin Cities Rapid Transit Company, also known as the Twin Cities Nines. The streetcars ran from the 1870s to 1954. The streetcars allowed the cities to grow and become the big cities they are today. Other cities like San Francisco, Chicago, and New York all had their own public rail transit. Cars were not readily available and affordable until after World War II, and without a way of public transit, cities cannot get better, bigger. For this historical report, I followed the Como Harriet Streetcar Line by foot from Motor Place in the then in Hills to the Lake Harriet Streetcar Barn. From there, I met with Aaron Isaacs, a local historian and author, to see more. From there, we drove through uptown and downtown Minneapolis, across the river to St. Paul to the state fairgrounds in Como Park. Later, we drove to the St. Paul Cathedral to look at the ruins of the Selby Hill route, which later, later became the tunnel under the cathedral. People used the streetcars as a way to get to work and for recreational activities. Kids used them to go to school. Sometimes schools would charter a streetcar for field trips, just like schools charter school buses today. These are two pictures of the streetcar line in Ninnan Hills today, and an old view at the end of the same block. The old building is now Great Harvest Bakery. The little building next to the big one is a term house that sent power th further down the line by boosting the voltage. The Minnesota Streetcar Museum, which runs the streetcars today, has a car barn under the Linden Hills Boulevard Bridge, which is the third oldest rainforest concrete bridge in Minnesota. The car barn is not always there, and the streetcars used to pass under the bridge and down what is now the alley behind Creative Kid Stuff and past Motor Place which is now an alley and walking path, which ends on Xerxes and 44th. The streetcar had both dedicated routes and tracks on the surface streets. I visited the car barn with Mr. Isaacs. It was named for his dad, who helped to restore the museum cars and built much to the museum. The car pictured in the two images on the upper part of the screen is called PCC number 322. PCC stands for President's Conference Committee, which advanced streetcar design with a modern appearance and metal bodies. They are first available in 1936, but not adopted by Twin Cities Rapid Transit until 1945. TCRT is very f proud of their home-built standard cars, which they are selling elsewhere in the U.S. You will notice that the PCCs have the look of 50s buses and set the standard for how buses looked and still look today. In the lower middle image, standard gate car number 265 is being worked on to get it ready for the spring. The museum offers rides through May through Christmas. They collect spare parts from cars and parts piles they find around the country. Some restored cars have even been cabins up north. The three Winden Hill stations from 1900 to 2014 are in the same place. The first one was built in 1900 and was small. According to historian Aaron Isaacs, the first station was moved to the shore of Lake Harriet and became a boat rental station in 1912. The middle chalet style building was built by Harry Wild Jones, a local architect. It was much bigger and had a large overhang that went past the end of the building to protect riders from the weather. It had an ice cream shop on the main floor and a holding cell for the park police on the basement. They were both torn down in 1954 when all streetcars were put out of service. The current one is an exterior replica of the original 1900 station built by the Minnesota Transportation Museum in 1973. The TCRT built the big pavilions, much bigger than the con 
current band shell at White Carriot to attract more riders for recreational purposes. So many people came to these concerts that they had to build a much larger station at Lake Harriet to make room for all the riders. These images are all on the East Calhoun right-of-way. It is part of the line that extends north from Lake Harriet and used to cross over 36th Street on a bridge. I walked the right-of-way until 28th Street, where it becomes an alleyway that turned east on 31st Street. You can see a house with funny angles at 31st Street, which was built inside of the track radius. On the left side of the alley was a car alley where, the, where it splits on the red circle. On the right side, which is now concrete, were the tracks. A much older track used to run here, part of the horse car line, which were port, pulled by horses but on light tracks, and were preferred to horse-drawn road carriages, which were a very rough ride. You can see on the left side of the screen my hands compared to a cross section of track, which is now a fence post built in the 1880s that still stands today. The fence is made out of old horse car rails. These posts are the only known pieces of horse car rail left in the Twin Cities. The image on the left is from 1914 at Lagoon and Gerard in uptown Minneapolis. You can see the tracks and granite Belgian blocks that were built around the tracks. The image on the right is a diagram of how the tracks are built up into the roadbed. The image on the left is a large warehouse building in built in 1885. Now called the Colonial Warehouse on 30... On 3rd Avenue North and 3rd Street, it was originally built as a cable car power station in Car Barn. The cable car idea was scrapped and it was used as a car house, power house, and headquarters until 1904. A much larger power house was built on the river later on. Cable cars are very good in hilly situations, but not good over long stretches in intersections. With 900 cars in operation, TCRT built this power plant on the left in 1920 to provide power for the growing system. The picture on the right is the coal burning power plant for the university on the same site, but in a new building. Several car houses were built to the same design throughout the area. This is where streetcars would park overnight and do small repairs. This is one that's still exists today. The snelling shops is where the more major repairs were done. Each streetcar would be overhauled every five years, basically taken apart and rebuilt to keep them working and safe. In the 1920s, when very few people had cars, streetcars were the way that everybody went to the state fair. These two pictures are of the same view. The 1910 photo on the right shows a big right line of streetcars in front of the grandstand at the fair. The image on the left from 2014, 104 years later, is of the same area, but the view of the grandstand is hidden by trees, and the parking lot is now paved. The streetcars and tracks are now gone. All the images on this page are of the same area, about 100 years apart. This is the bridge in Como and station at Como Park near the end of the line in St. Paul. It is just east of Como Zoo. The bridge is now in ruins and no one is allowed on it or under it anymore. According to Aaron Isaacs, there are plans to fix the bridge this summer and make it look like it used to. In the old image, you can see the roof of the same station. The floor of the station is a terrazzo map of the whole line. The two older images show Selby Hill, which rises as a, at a 16% grade. These images show the cable cars riding up the hill. In the image on the left, you can see the Kitson Mansion, which was torn down in 1904 to make way for the Cathedral in St. Paul. 
the lower image, you can see me next to the ruins of the retaining wall that can be seen in the image of, images above. The hill was unclimbable for the electric cars, which later replaced the cable cars. After the conversion to electric cars in 1907, the Selby Tunnel was dug. All these images are of the Selby Tunnel. Now, the tunnel is blocked off from access and no longer used. You can see me on the tracks for reference and scale. The modern electric streetcar uses what is called standard gauge, which is the same for all freight and passenger trains worldwide. Four feet, eight and a half inches. The characteristic bell-shaped caps and metal power poles were made in St. Paul. The image on the left is of a pole in Minneapolis at the turn of the century. The pole on the right is currently in Como Park. It is likely the last intact metal streetcar pole in Minneapolis. There is still a piece of old copper wire attached to it. These images are from the interior of the two restored standard gate cars, numbers 265 and 1300, from left to right, respectively. These cars are both par both in the collection at Lake Harriet. I would like to give my thanks to Aaron Isaacs and the Streetcar Museum. Thank you.